Welcome back to part two of our look at jQuery.ime. In the last episode, we implemented an input method for Japanese emoticons as an example of how to extend jQuery.ime. I spoke to one of the authors of jQuery.ime who mentioned that they're working on creating an extension for Chrome and Firefox to allow you to use jQuery.ime everywhere. But I'd still like to implement the bookmarklet as an example of how to implement a bookmarklet and so that you can use it if you want in the meantime. If you haven't created a bookmarklet before, it's not really that complicated. The only thing to know about it is that it's essentially a link that uses a JavaScript protocol. So let's add a link here. Um, I know that A is an inline element, but we'll use it anyway. Uh, and we'll call it bookmarklet. And the reference for the link, instead of being HTTP or something else, is JavaScript. And any valid JavaScript can go into here. So let's just test it out with alert hi. Notice that I'm using single quotes instead of double quotes so that I don't have to escape them. So we'll save that and reload the page. And now there is a bookmarklet link that if we click it, will execute the JavaScript. And we can bookmark this link. And it comes up with the name bookmarklet by default. And if we go into our bookmarks and run it, it executes that same JavaScript. So what we need to do at this point is create a bookmarklet that instead of creating an alert, loads jQuery.ime and converts all the inputs on a page to jQuery.ime inputs. The first thing that the bookmarklet needs to do is load jQuery.ime. And we can think of it as if we appended a script tag to the body of the page. So using jQuery, we could write something like this, source equals But there's a problem here in that we don't want to rely on the page already having jQuery. We could be using this on any site that may or may not have jQuery loaded already. So we'll have to stick to basic JavaScript here. We can use document.createElement to create our script and then set the, uh, let's see, let's assign that to a variable, and then set the source. And then finally, append that to the body. So now, before we go any further with this, let's test what we have. We'll reload the page and try out this bookmarklet. But this is not what we want. The browser has taken us to a new page, as you can see from the address bar. So let's go back and try this again. What's happening here is that if a JavaScript link returns anything but an undefined value, it will be loaded in a new page. We can get around this by wrapping this in an anonymous function which we want to do anyway because it'll keep this code from polluting the global namespace of the page anyway. And with that, let's try reloading and clicking that again. So we haven't seen anything um, because I don't have Firebug here to take a look at the page. And now let's check the HTML for this page. And you can see the script with the undefined source here is added to the end of the body. Now, what we could try to do at this point is add more scripts, one for each of the 
jQuery.ime sources that we need to load to the body, and then execute the code that does the input text area IME transformation. Uh, but to do that, we also need to add jQuery to the page. But what you'll find if you try to do this is it's very difficult to get your code that sets up the inputs and text areas to run after all of the necessary scripts have been loaded. There are ways to do this that varies from browser to browser, but since there's more than one script, you would need to set up a counter and keep track of which scripts have loaded and wait till they've all loaded. And the bookmarklet would become larger as well. What I think would be best for our purposes is to load a single script that contains everything we need, including the code to run once the scripts are loaded at the end of it as a concatenation of all the JavaScript we need. So jQuery and all of the jQuery.ime sources along with our code in one single file. This also has the benefit of allowing us to change the bookmarklet on the server side without the user having to update their bookmarklet. Of course, it has the downside of making the bookmarklet load quite a large JavaScript file, but that's just a trade-off we're going to have to make. Let's say that we'll make this bookmarklet script available uh, for now since we're testing locally at a local URL, bookmarklet.js. And bookmarklet.js is going to be made up of jQuery, the jQuery.ime files, and some initialization code, which we'll put in init.js. And this file is going to do a couple things. Uh, first, and I'm going to write this just like I'd write any file that depends on jQuery, except that I'm not going to use the document.ready event because the document has already been loaded. The first thing we do is the same thing that's done in the current index.html, and that is to convert all the inputs and text areas to IME inputs and text areas. And that would almost be enough, except that we also need to load some CSS to style it properly. And we can't load that, uh, well, we could load that from the bookmarklet, but we might as well load it from here. So we'll get the document's head and append a link. And, and that style sheet is jQuery.ime.css. Next, we need to take this initialization file and combine it with the other JavaScript files we need. Uh, I don't have a screen open right now, so I'm going to go ahead and put WebFSD into the background. And the file we're looking for is bookmarklet.js. And we need to concatenate, um, let's see, all of the jQuery IME uh, JS as well as, uh, let's see, the jQuery library and our initialization. But the order that these are concatenated in is important because when this file is loaded, the browser will execute it line by line in order. And for example, jQuery.ime depends on jQuery, so that needs to go first. And in fact, the jQuery.ime files uh, depend on each other. So let's look at the order that they're loaded in in the example and mimic that in our code. So first it's jQuery, then IME, then selector, preferences, and input methods. So the libs. And now there is a 
300, well, a little bit less than 300 kilobyte bookmarklet.js that we can load. So we'll return to the bookmarklet code we have here, and it should work now. So let's try reloading the page and clicking our bookmarklet. And if everything goes correctly, we shouldn't have any errors. So the real test of this bookmarklet is actually bookmarking it and testing it on another page that doesn't have jQuery.ime. Before we do that, I'm going to change the name of this, jQuery.ime, and make a new bookmark. And now let's go to, say, the uh, Esperanto Wikipedia page and test this there. Or rather, let's just uh, go to Google, since it's a simpler page, and test out the bookmarklet. We have the jQuery.ime bookmarklet, and no errors. And now let's see what's going on. You can see that the uh, input menu is displaying, but not in the right location. So is the correct CSS file being added, first of all? And the problem here is that I used source instead of href, so let's fix that in our init uh, here and rebuild bookmarklet and try force reloading. And now we can try the bookmarklet again, jQuery.ime. And here's the uh, menu. So let's try selecting Esperanto. And here's something interesting. The input changes here. Um, this should be simple to fix, except that the input method has gone off the top of the page, and we'll just ignore that for now and see if we can find Esperanto. We can't, so let's try clearing this out. And well, this is kind of an annoying problem. Let's see if I can fix it by closing Firebug, reloading the page, uh, typing something in to get the input here to begin with, opening the bookmarklet, not the entire bookmarklet. And now this is interesting. The menu is not opening up at all. Now, if I don't sound entirely confused, that's because I tested this before recording, and there's an issue with the way that jQuery.ime uh, assumes some things about how it's being used. Namely, that the input it's being run on is displayed when uh, .ime is called. To show what I mean, let's take a look at what's happening here. When I click this, it actually creates an IME selector that you can see here. But it's not visible or rather the actual selector menu is not visible and you might be able to see why by looking at this top value that's very wrong. And the reason this is happening from what I can tell is that jQuery.ime is doing some calculations on the width and height and position of the selector element before it's actually displayed or rather the input element before it's displayed. So we can fix that here by removing the top value and uh, in general this is a reminder that doing positioning and styling in JavaScript has more potential for errors than just doing the positioning in pure CSS. 
With that said, let's try selecting Esperanto from this list. And let's see if we can input it. And that's not working either. And the console gives us the reason why. The bookmarklet, or rather the jQuery IME code, is trying to load the Esperanto rules from Google.com, which is clearly not going to work. So let's see how to fix this by looking through the source code for jQuery.ime. There is a load function for loading the rule sets from the server. And the work that we're seeing in the console is being done here. It's an Ajax call to load a URL with a data type of script. Setting data type script means that when the JavaScript file is fetched, it will be executed. There's a shortcut for this. You could use get script with the URL here uh, instead of specifying data type script, but this is fine. So we can see that the way to fix this problem would be setting the IME path, which is part of IME.options. And when we looked at this in the first episode, let me see, there's the uh, fn.ime function. The options, if they're given, get passed to a new IME object. And here they're extended, or rather the defaults are extended with the options. So let's look at the name again, the uh, path. IME path is the name of the option that we want. So we can fix this by going into init.js, passing in some options. Again, so let's just uh, write down IME path while we remember it. Look again at this only argument here is option. So we'll say IME path and try setting that to this URL we've been using here. So we need to rebuild the bookmarklet and then let's try this again. Reload. Uh, type something in just to get the input to show up in the right place. Run the bookmarklet. Then again, we'll need to fix the positioning of this element. Let's select Esperanto. And if everything's gone correctly, there we go. We can now do a search in Esperanto. And that's it. With this, we've created a bookmarklet that we can use in modern web browsers to use the jQuery.ime input methods on pretty much every page on the web. I hope you've enjoyed our look at jQuery.ime and that it's given you some ideas for your next jQuery plugin, or just given you a better understanding of how input methods can work on the web. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you soon. <laughs>